Good morning, everyone. Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. Hope everybody's enjoying their three-day weekend if you are off today. If you are not off today, I still hope you have a good day. Um, all right, today what I want to talk about is this compilation called Metal for Mothers. And this came out in 1980. This is a compilation album of, at the time, the up-and-coming new wave of British heavy metal bands. Um, I had, of course, heard of a few of the bands on here, but there were a lot of bands on here that I had never heard of before. And over the last few weeks, I've been listening to this album, and I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit. Uh, this came out on EMI. As I said, in 1980, there are sleeve notes by the famous Neil Kay. And there was a Medal for Mothers 2 that I do not have. I will eventually pick that up as well. Um, if anybody has any information on that, let me know. But let me talk about the songs on here because... There are some interesting bands that uh, I had never heard of and uh, you might have never heard of before and um, just some interesting arrangements on here as well. Okay, so it opens up with um, everybody's favorite Iron Maiden and a version of Sanctuary. And of course, this is with uh, Paul Diano on vocals. This is actually a different version than would that would appear on... Uh, the first Maiden album. And I didn't know this until I started listening to it. Um, so it's uh, it's as good as the debut album version. Um, it's a little rougher, but, but I definitely dig it. And it's cool. Because when I bought this, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I've already heard Iron Maiden Sanctuary. But it's cool that there's a different version of it on here. Um, track two is by uh, is a song called Sledgehammer by a band called Sledgehammer. Now, this was one of the bands I had never heard of before. I guess these guys were uh, formed in 1978. Uh, Mike Cook is on vocals. And when I was listening to it, I'm like, this has like a major Motorhead vibe to it, which makes sense. But, um, you know, reading up on them a little bit, I guess that they had supported Motorhead uh, uh during one of their first gigs. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And obviously it was an influence to them. I think Motorhead were an influence to a lot of bands, but I definitely get a Motorhead vibe on this song. Very cool song. Uh, track three is a band called the EF Band, which I think is a strange name for a band. Um, it's a song called Fighting for Rock and Roll. And... Uh, Another very cool song, a, a song that I get another Motorhead vibe from. These guys were actually a Swedish band, and they moved to Britain around 1979, and they kind of got clumped into that new wave of British heavy metal. Um, some cool stuff that I found out by, when I looked them up. I guess Lars from Metallica had sent a letter to the EF band's manager, uh asking if he could play drums with them, which I thought was pretty cool. And if anybody who knows Lars knows that he was big into the new wave of British heavy metal. Um, obviously, he was looking for gigs way back when, too, which is kind of cool. Um, with a little bit more research, I found out that the member, one of the members of the band, not at this point, but Andy LaRock, uh, guitarist, ended up being in the King Diamond band. I guess he was in the EF band for a while. I thought that was pretty cool. So, uh, Fighting for Rock and Roll, cool tune. Another one I, I really dig. And, uh, you know, I think unfortunately with this band, it's the name that probably was, came to, uh, or had something to do with their demise. I'm sure that that wasn't it, but the name wasn't that catchy. Next, we have uh, the band Toad the Wet Sprocket. And no, this is not the Toad the Wet Sprocket that came to uh, be very popular in the early 90s. Um, this is the one song that I do not care for on the album. Now, 
I don't know what other songs Toad the Wet Sprocket have uh, released, but this song, it's called Blues and A. It just doesn't fit on the album. It's a bluesy ballad. It's, it's very slow. It has no uh, characteristics of New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And again, New Wave of British Heavy Metal definitely had ballads, but this ballad doesn't have any characteristics that would that would put it with the new wave of British heavy metal. For me, anyways. I mean, maybe there are some huge Toad the Wet Sprocket fans out there. But this is the one weak song on the album. It's called Blues and A. Next, you have Praying Mantis and the song Captured City. I love this. Hard rock and guitars, cool riff. Um, I love the vocals in Praying Mantis. They're, they're very polished, very smooth vocals. I love the harmonies. Um, I get a very uh, Blue Oyster Cult vibe from them. And since I'm talking about Praying Mantis, I also have Praying Mantis um, Time Tells No Lies. This was their debut album. And for me on this, Metal for Mothers, Iron Maiden... Praying Mantis and Angel Witch are my favorite artists. So if you are into New Wave of British Heavy Metal, if you are into, you know, great guitar riffs, awesome vocals, vocal harmonies, um, just great songwriting, you would definitely dig Praying Mantis. They're not as heavy as an Iron Maiden. Um, they're more along the lines of what Def Leppard would kind of get into which I thought was kind of interesting. These guys should have been bigger than, than they were. Um, this is a very, very strong album. And I love the song Captured City on this compilation. Next, uh, track six, you have a band called Ethel the Frog. Another, you know, kind of a crappy name. And I mean, I don't mean to down these bands, but, you know, you have a, a name like Iron Maiden and Prey Mantis, and then you have Ethel the Frog. Um, these guys were formed in 1976 on, um, uh, this is a song called Fight Back. I really like the song though. This is, this song has, uh, a major punk vibe to it. It's the only song on the album I feel that has that, that punk vibe to it. Um, definitely has an earworm chorus. It stays with you. I'm um, doing some research on these guys. I guess they got the name from a Monty Python skit. So, um, you know, I can see that, but not the best of names. Uh, cool song, though. Ethel the Frog, Fight Back. Next, a, a highlight of this album. You've got uh, track seven, Angel Witch, the song Baphomet. I love Angel Witch. I've got their first album. Um, this song is the heaviest song on the album. It's got a Sabbath-y intro with guitars. And then it comes in fast with some metal guitars. Um... I love the vocals. He does this, uh, and I can't remember the lead singer's name, but he does this screaming uh, pre-chorus, which is awesome. Like I said, this is the heaviest song on the album, and I really, really like Angel Witch. I love this song, Baphomet. I love their first album. Um, and then I really feel like they could have gone places as well. Um and I know that they've just released, uh, you know, albums in the last couple years that I have to check out. But definitely, this song, Baphomet, and their first album are, are awesome. All right, next, track eight. You've got Maiden. Remember them? A version of Wrath Child. Now, this is not the same version that is on uh, Killers. This is slower. And uh, I don't really like this version as much. It's cool to have but I prefer the uh, version on Killers. But it's so cool to have a different version of, uh, you know, Maiden Wrathchild, a song that we've, we've all heard so many times. And again, I was excited when I got this album to find out that they were different versions. Um, very cool. Uh, and I love Paul Diano's vocals. Huge Paul Diano fan. Next, uh, track nine is by a band called Samson, and it's a song called Tomorrow or Yesterday. Now, interesting tidbit about Samson. Bruce Dickinson started his singing with the band Samson. And then before, of course, he joined Iron Maiden. When he was with Samson, he went by the name of Bruce Bruce. Now, 
This song, though, does not have Bruce on vocals. It's got Paul Sampson on vocals. So it's pre-Bruce. Very cool song. It opens up with a piano, and you're thinking, okay, this is pretty. I'm not really getting a new wave of British heavy metal vibe from it. Slow ballad, very nice vocals, pleasing melody. Um, and then you've got the guitar melody that follows the chorus, which is very cool. It's It's got definitely got a new wave of British heavy metal vibe to it. But then the mid, mid song, the song speeds up. It's got a heavy riff. And then this aggressive keyboard solo comes in. It's so, so cool. So this is definitely a highlight of the album. Um, I'm going to have to go back out and dig my Samson CDs out because I've got the Samson CDs that have Bruce on vocals. I remember them being very good, but I'm going to have to pull those back out again. I mean, of course, Bruce was in top vocal form back then. Uh, this was pre-Maiden. Uh, but it was cool to hear this song tomorrow or yesterday. And I'm telling you right now, Paul Sampson has a really good voice. Um, Sampson is an underrated band, I feel. Definitely good stuff. And then it ends with uh, a band called Nuts, N-U-T-Z. And the song is called Bootlickers. Um, I guess these guys formed in 1973. I was trying to find some information about them. There's not a lot of information about Nuts on the internet. Uh, that could be dangerous if you search nuts on the internet, but N-U-T-Z. Um, this song is cool though. It's upbeat. Uh, it's, it's got some cool guitar riffs, great vocals. Um, the chorus is cool cause they do a, a sort of a reverby echoey vibe on the chorus. I really like it. The only information I found about nuts was I guess they formed into a band called Rage. So again, I don't know too much about it. Very cool song though. So um, if you are into early heavy metal, if you are into the new wave of British heavy metal, if you kind of want to experience some different bands uh, besides Iron Maiden, definitely check this out. Again, um, Sanctuary, great song. Sledgehammer, awesome band. EF Band, crappy name, good song. Toad the Wet Sprocket, not really into that song. I don't know. I can't really, you know, I, I'll have to listen to some of their other songs, but I'm not really into the song that's on here. Praying Mantis, definitely Captured City, awesome song. Check out Time Tells No Lies, their debut album. Just want to make sure I was getting it right. It, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, I love Ethel the Frog. I hate the name, but great song. Angel Witch, Baphomet, oh, awesome song. Check out their first album. Iron Maiden's Wrath Child, great version of that. Samson, Tomorrow or Yesterday, awesome. And Nuts, uh, great song, Bootliggers, but I don't know too much about the band. So... All in all, this is a great release. Uh, I definitely think I would like to get Metal for Mothers Volume 2. Uh, but I will definitely be listening to this for a while. And like I said, it's got me into some other bands that I had never heard of before. So definitely check it out. And uh, hopefully you like this video. Subscribe. Like it. Uh, enjoy your Monday. And uh, I hope you guys are going to listen to a lot of music today. All right. Talk to you later.